Hey, Chatteroonie, we're live, baby. We're live for the Q&A, Chatteroonie. Let me just make sure the YouTube upload worked, too. Let me check on that. Um, let me make sure that that's, like, not glitched out or anything. The reason I started late, reason I started late today is, man, it was, like, 10 minutes to go, and on my exports, I started playing them, playing them back, and I realized I accidentally added... Yeah, we're good. We're good, we're good, we're good. Um, reverb to the entire episode. So the entire episode sounded like it was in like a tiny little room. Really, really crazy. Whew. Oh, I can't believe we're live. Oh, we made it. We made it in time. I'm feeling good. No clean open for Bloodworth. Let's just roll into it. Uh, that was episode seven. Chad, I was so excited to watch you react to that live. I, I gotta say, I was pretty pumped. That is, that makes this whole dumb thing worth it. Just to see people reacting to that episode live. <laughs> um, so you remember last week I talked about how uh, I wanted people guessing, that I wanted people to be like guessing about things. I thought there would be a more negative reaction to Kazomi up to this point. I thought people would like not like her. I thought I would like get flack for creating a character that like is dumb and always on her phone you know what i mean where like it's like oh why does the girl have to be like that you know what i mean and so like this was like meant to be like the oh you think you know kazomi but then also i also thought that people would assume that kazomi works for the box peak organization i i thought that you'd be guessing this this whole time and you'd be like oh i know what's going on with kazomi and you know that's the misdirect in the beginning where it's like hey Jordy, give me some Kazomi's fries. You know that dramatic music there? Um, people were guessing that. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. And then maybe you just weren't, were you, were you, did you think it was like too obvious and that's why you weren't like, you didn't want to hurt my feelings by saying the twist is too obvious? Was that what was happening? And then did anyone guess that Kazomi is a Power Ranger? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Steph in chat did predict that Kazomi's a Power Ranger. Okay, I guess I got to try harder next time. Yeah, so that was fun. That was a really, really fun episode just to give Kazomi this whole context, this whole like, oh, that's why she always says weird stuff is she doesn't quite understand the language. You know what I mean? Like just this whole context for Kazomi and how much she loves Box Peak. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Um, all right, I want I have a couple of things I want to show you before we start the Q&A. Um, let me show you my live stuff first. Uh, welcome to my nasty, dirty living room. Here we go. Here it is. This is my living space. But uh, one of the things I was really excited to do for this episode, of many, obviously this was to me like one of the most exciting episodes to make, um, uh, was... You see this a ton in anime, the spinning backgrounds, the spinning backdrops. And I tried to do it with the uh, Lazy Susan that I got for that one shot of uh, Bronze Fang when he's throwing the box. It was too wobbly. And so I'm like looking around my house for like, um, excuse me, I'm looking around my house for uh, something that just spins really easily. And it happened. It happened. I found the perfect thing, the perfect spinning object. And I just so it happened to have like bought this recently without this intent. Check this out. Look at this, look at this ultra smooth spin chat. I actually just retaped it before so it's a little wobbly. How fun is that? It's the it's the smoothest possible, just poof, and it creates the effect, the exact effect I wanted. And so all those shots aren't like faked. I'm actually really holding the jet in front of this thing. Uh, I want to show you the jet too. I'm gonna have to turn this light off. So the jet's cool. Um, this was like one of those things where like it doesn't. I'm not aware if it's going to connect until I do it. This is actually three pieces. So like when it's like uncombining to like do the thing it's like that's actually just like three different pieces and like the head is really under there yeah 
And so I, ma I made this as like three different drawings, right? And it was just so lucky that they actually combined the right way. Um, so yeah, it was pretty fun. And that's actually, you know, the Reba Star's head. Um, like drawing this thing is like so fun. Look at this thing. The gems, they all come from Walgreens. Um, that's how I found that first. So I was like, you know, basically I'm doing Michaels for my arts and crafts stuff, but I'll also like snoop around in other arts and crafts sections of like targets at targets and Walgreens. And they just had a, like a little sheet of gems and I'm like for the Magna soldiers. And so the Magna soldiers colors are all the gems that came in this little sticker pack. <laughs> and so like, uh, that determined which colors people would have. Uh, Kazomi was pink ahead of time. I can't say that it was pink because of that. I lucked out. They had pink gems in the thing. But so then when I'm creating this guy, I'm like, oh, okay, so it's got to be pink, green, blue, and purple because those are the gems that I have. Um, and what's also really funny is like, I made this design, right? Oops. There we go. We're back in. I made this design and I had to change some of the dialogue because originally uh kazomi was just like the right shoulder instead of the head and right arm and so i had to like i had to redo that line like head and right arm and some of elise's stuff elise willems guest star of the episode um uh no longer was relevant when it came to like things that weren't working and so i had to move a lot of dialogue around because i didn't want to write elise who did me a huge favor you know two years ago doing vo for this i didn't want to be like Elise, I changed a little bit of dialogue because I drew the monster differently. Can you re-record some lines for me? And so I just kind of moved some stuff around. Um, it kind of works. Uh, here's Ronar. This is canonical Ronar. He is the orange Magna soldier. Uh, I know it's not clear because he's in a red tube, but this is what he looks like canonically. He's got a cool jacket he wears over his uniform. Okay, uh, a couple more things that I want to show you and then we'll start the Q&A. Um, the designs for uh, the, the Magna Soldiers, I think I did the most concept art for, the most drawings and scribbles and like it was the hardest thing for me to figure out. Um, uh, it was like, oh no, there's another thing I got to show you too. Um, uh, I knew that, so like drawing Kazomi from the beginning, right? She's got her like diagonal lines. Um, I knew that that would be an element of their costume. I mean, I'll just show you this stuff. It's like ugly. I guess I just wanted to prepare you for some like ugly art. So like, this is me like trying to figure out what they would look like. Right. And it's just like gross. It's like, I can't nail this down. I'm like, what is what is it even going to look like? How do I draw this thing? And it wasn't until like, really, I was just making the actual characters themselves that I figured it out. Cause here's the thing. I knew I wanted somebody screaming Kazomi as he burns to death, right? And so that's why their mouths have to be exposed and their eyes have to be exposed. <laughs> I was trying to like figure out that compromise, right? Cause normal Power Rangers, you know, their eyes are covered and their mouths are covered. Um, and so like it, that moment wouldn't be as fun. Um, yeah, this is me really trying to figure out the design. I guess you can kind of see it. You can kind of see the final design in his chest. Um, but I don't know where the head came from. It just came from when I was finally just drawing it, you know? Um, and then this is cool. This was the setup. This was just earlier this week. This was, I was saving this, the burning, um, because I can't burn anything at my apartment. I can't like go downstairs and burn something. Um, I can't burn anything at the studio. And so I had to ask Jones if I could burn something in his backyard. And I had to wait. I had to wait a little while after Milo was born to go and burn something in Jones's backyard. <laughs> you know, I had to wait. And so last, was it two weeks ago? I don't remember. It was like two or three weeks ago I, I shot uh, Jiko burning. And I got home and it had been so long since I recorded something actually that I realized upon getting home that I forgot to hit record. So <laughs> earlier this week, I had to make uh, 
two new Jikos. And you see them. It's um, it's the Jiko who's doing this and the Jiko who's doing this. I had to make those. And so it's kind of fun. Uh, I thought I was done with art, right? Oh, look at these sweaty pits. I'm sweaty today. I'm, I'm, uh, I got an energy about me, a nervous energy. Um, uh, it's, there's a couple of things there, right? Like you, you got to learn to hit record and the way you learn to hit record is missing it up, you know, like burning a thing permanently and you can't go re-record it. Uh, so then, yeah, I had to like, I, I'm done with drawing. I've put my pencils away and I have to take them back out. Um, but I really like those two expressions, actually. I like them better than him just screaming up into the sky. Uh, the anguish, anguish with which he like burns with his hands on his head is just like so impactful. Um, I wanted to show you what they look like after the burn because this is so sweet. Maybe I'm like a psycho, but like the way that the diamonds have like turned into like a little pearl is so interesting to me. Um, yeah, that's what they look like after they've burned. Um, so cool. So, so cool. I actually want to show you those. Uh, can I do that? Um, yeah, let me see if I can actually like drop in the clips of the burning. Let me see if I can drop that in. Did that work? Why didn't that work? Hey, buddy, play that clip. So maybe I have to do that again. Okay, let me try this then. Let me try this then. Don't worry about that. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I saw it for a second. Did you see it for a second? There we go. Why did that play just for a second? Okay, so this is this is my first. This is poor. This is prototype Victor. This is one of my first drawings ever for Box Peak, and poor prototype Victor had to burn. Um, this is me like testing focus, right? And it's like, okay, let's see if he can burn. And this sucks. This was actually like, this is me hitting record. This is the first thing I burned of anything. Here we go. Okay, so he's burning. He's out of focus. Pull him back. Oh, he flopped over. Okay, got it. Got it. He's upside down. Okay, no. No, this was bad. And so that's why you do prototype Victor first. I mean, <laughs> F2 prototype Victor. Sorry, buddy. Sorry you had to go like that. Um... <laughs> but he died for science, chat. Um, RIP King. <laughs> um, and so then I burned after that, then I burned two, two Jikos that I, in which I forgot to hit record for. Um, but then here are the other ones. No, stop that. Okay, this is this is annoying. Like Microsoft really wants me to use its bad video player. And even though I told it it's not my default video player, it's like, it really is though. Honestly, you're really gonna want this. All right, is this working? Is this gonna pop up? Ooh, nice nature noises, right? That was nice. Um, it's not popping up. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. So this was, a. this was again, kind of me just testing it. So I learned that you really have to tape up the spine. You have to tape up, to tape up the entire spine so they don't flop over after the end of the burn. Um, okay. We're testing distance. We're getting focus, right? You know what I mean? We're like, okay, how far away does he have to be? Okay. This is, this is about right. Okay. Now let me get my little candle lighter. Okay. Yep. Got it. So sorry, this Jiko did not need to burn, but like I just wanted it just in case. Okay, oh, uh, I see some flames. That's good, good effect. You know what, This is that's pretty good. I could have used it and then he flops over. That's not bad. Obviously I didn't love the expression, a little too confident, right? <laughs> okay, so this was, uh, stop this, Windows. I don't like you, dude. This isn't about you. Okay. Here we go. So, I mean, look at that scream. To me, that's a better scream than him shouting. To me, this is this show's anguish, right? <laughs> God. There's me shaking everything, trying to get some shakes down. Um, well, how long is this clip? Let me let me go to the skip to the burn, dude. Skip to the good stuff. Here we go. Okay. 
Look at that gem, though. It looks nice, right? Walgreens. Get yourself some gems. So I use this. I use the beginning of this clip, but there, pop. He pops off because I didn't tape him enough. Oh, look how it melts. Look at his gem melting. Oof. Oh, that's good stuff. All right. So I learned. You know what I mean? I learned I learned from that one, too. Um, And then finally, the one that we... The final, like, the, I, I was like, man, I wish that could have gone better, but I'm going to nail it with this one. And let me skip to the near end of this one, too. There we go. Okay. Ooh, I like, the, I like the effect of that shake, too. I mean, look at that expression, man. That's just, this is, to me, horrifying. This is horrifying to me. Okay, it's a little too high. There we go. I'm shaking the camera too. Oh, nice effect. Yep, 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 yep. This is great. Oh, and he curls in. Perfect. Yeah. There you go. Burning footage, chat. Some of the last stuff I shot for Box Peak is this. <laughs> Were you giggling while shooting this? Honestly, it was like a little tense. I didn't want to mess it up. It was a little tense. Jones, he let me in. He let me into his backyard. He gave me an extension cord. And then he's just like, okay, I'm going to leave you to it. <laughs> he's just like, I'm going to, I'm going to go inside. You take, you do this. It's like, okay. <laughs> um, sorry. Last thing I want to show you is how jacked up Vavava is. Um, okay. So this is Vavava. Look at how, like, this thing is a Starbucks cup that I cut a hole into. This thing's like a weird, I don't know what the crafters use this for. You, you, you can just get, like, a weird thick glass light bulb at Michael's, you know what I mean? Stuff some, like, a uh, uh, basket stuff, you know what I mean? Like, you, you put this in Easter baskets, you cut up a bunch of these, you stuff them in. And then the same uh, uh, flashlight that I used for Olio Vula... This is so dumb. So you just shove it in the stupid hole in the back and then you go like, and that's how Vavava talks. <laughs> Best effect of the episode, like, thank you. <laughs> that's, how you that's how you make Vavava, isn't that funny? Like this thing is so jacked, it's so jacked up. But yeah, I kind of like how it looks in the actual episode. Um, What's funny is that scene the color is super weird, and it's because I had to turn down the lights a ton so that Vivava would shine. If you have a ton of lights shining on him, you can't tell that he's sparkling. Uh, and so I had to turn everything down around it, and so that scene kind of looks weird. Uh, but, in my mind, worth it. Okay, so let me, um, let me pull the clip, let me pull the episode into our current project. Yep, 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 yep. And then I'm going to have to silence it. Okay, and then we can start the actual Q&A. We do have two rules. Two Q&A rules. Um, rule one. Keep it about box peak. Don't ask me what kind of couch this is. You know, we're, we're here to talk about box peak. And then rule number two. Don't ask about future episodes. Um, oh, and I do want to remind everybody that the easiest way for me to see comments in chat is to do at easy allies because it highlights it for me. And so when I look at chat, uh, instead of seeing a wall of text, I see a, a highlight and I see like, oh, that's that black box I need to read next to that. Um, but yeah, generally I just uh, pluck questions as I see them. Um, so go nuts, go wild, and let's have a Q&A. Oh, whoa. Oh, we're going to have to go a little over because I started late. Okay. I'm looking at the clock. It's like 11.37 already. It's like brutal. Um, so one moment, Chatteroonie, and there we go. Okay. Um, any fear about introducing new universes inviting too many Rick and Morty comparisons? No. <laughs> no. Uh, don't worry about more universes being introduced. That's, that's just the Kazomi one. Did I say all the VO was recorded two years ago? Yeah, I think that's... I think that tracks chat. I feel like I've been working on this for two and a half years. I feel like the first half year was writing and getting the VO down. And then this, the next 
two years after that were all production. And maybe that's incorrect. I actually don't have the dates down. I don't know for sure. Um, oh, there was one other thing I wanted to check. So uh, Epidemic, we use for all of our uh, music, obviously, right? And you can track um, like when tracks were added to it, to your playlists. And the Kazomi song, I think, is one of the first I ever added. Oh, maybe not. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see this playlist. Because what's so crazy is I heard that song and I'm like, oh, that's the Kazomi song. <laughs> yeah, so on, on uh, oof, July 30th of 2017, I was like, oh, I'll use this at the end of the Kazomi episode. 2017 chat. <laughs> The script isn't done at this point. It's really, really funny. I just love this song. Sorry. Sorry, you want you want to ask questions and I'm just like jamming out. Uh, Leaving me naked is the track. <laughs> we can't even hear it. <laughs> okay, all right. Let me. No, 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 no. I'm. I'm. That's frivolous. All right, here you go, chat. good track it's a good track okay um uh back to the q a so yeah uh i added that one super early it's really fun me and my army is the second track that i added to this playlist <laughs> how dumb is this me up on why didn't you ask me out that's like the second oh, it's so dumb okay so yeah sometimes i just like had a song in mind as i'm writing the script actually uh which is pretty dumb um how early on did you decide that superpowers existed within Boxpeak? Does it apply to that one particular universe? Right. So these people do not exist within the Boxpeak universe. Uh, these Magnus soldiers. I had to make it a different universe, right? Because I think it kind of sold out the world. I think I had the idea Kazomi is essentially a Power Ranger, but that ruins the entire world of Boxpeak. And so that necessitated it being a different dimension. And that necessitated that being her power, basically. Um... Because it's like, even if it's like a different island Power Rangers exist on, it kind of ruins the whole world of Box Peak. So yeah, it's really important to me that this is a whole other separate thing. How'd you do the fish monster exploding? It'd be fun if we can play that back slow-mo. Let me see if I can do that for you. Um, because that made a mess. That made a mess that I'm still dealing with. I'm still coping with that mess. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Because what we can do slow mo, right? We learned how to do that last week. Okay. Was it C? Yeah, it is. No, but you're making it faster. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. We got that flash. Okay. You're gonna see a cut in the middle of this rack focus. It's a fake rack focus. Oh, I don't even know if you saw the cut. That was smooth, Kyle. Shake them. Okay. There's that one. There's a frame of this. There's a frame of that. Ooh, two frames of that. And then me just throwing this, I like handmade confetti. I had like, um, uh, like packing paper. I don't know what you would call the paper, really light paper that I had to cut up into little tiny pieces and then just throw it at the scene. <laughs> nice explosion effect though, right? It creates like a wave and then another fake focus back in, but you can see he's, He's got one of like those little pieces of paper attached to his ear, right? Like that just stuck to him. Uh, and then, yeah, I have little pieces of orange and yellow all around my apartment uh, to this very day. Um, but it was worth it. Cool explosion. So it's weird. There's like a little bit of stop motion in there, uh, a little bit of like live action movement, and a little like the, the explosion is just one frame each, just a. 
Um, so yeah, it was cool. It was fun to do. That was super fun to do. And it, also nerve wracking. You don't get a lot of opportunities to do the tossing the confetti around in your apartment. Um, did I consider having Kazomi finish her box peak explanation? No, I, I didn't think that's what I kind of like about it is that it makes no sense. And she's like having a hard time explaining it, but really, no, no, no. I don't think anyone would sit around and have anyone explain box peak to them. Uh, I think it's important for her to get interrupted there. Um, how would you feel about box peak fan art in the finale with Amanda? Yes. Goaty locks. Thank you for reminding me about that. I do. I want to save, I want to do uh fan art like we do for like regular Friday night streams or Pokemon streams, but I do want to save it all for Amanda. And so, uh, for episode 10, when we're doing the big Q and a with Amanda and like all that stuff, um, we'll definitely do, uh, some true art. And so I'll ask for submissions the week before that. Was Box Peak's opening theme inspired by Power Rangers? No, it's mostly directly inspired by Pokemon's theme. Um, we definitely musically looked at some other things, but no, I don't, I, I don't think... The only thing that musically I would say was inspired by Power Rangers is the track that plays uh, when you first see Kixel City. Um, I looked at metal, because that's what's funny, is like Power Rangers is all metal. Power Rangers is metal music, just like... Couldn't find something exactly like it, but I like this track. I like that almost uh, when the jet appears, you hear like, you know, it's cool. How'd you do the shot of the Magnus soldiers dying? Oh, onions, baby onions, you missed it? I mean, I, I legit burned them. <laughs> I burned them alive. I actually like, you know, you have like one of those clickers for candles. And so I just held it here and then just from the bottom, just and then just filmed filmed that character burning. It's, it was really important for me to for that to be a tangible death for you to know for sure those characters are dead now. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> it, you got to know you can't leave that ambiguous because then people have hope. Do I expect people to come away from this episode liking Kazomi or hating Kazomi or both? Uh, I expect people to come away from the episode having weird feelings about Kazomi. Yeah, for sure. What made you decide to take the story in the current dark direction? Oh, I mean, like, this is... I wrote all the scripts at once. <laughs> that is something I was scared of, is, like, people being like, he really changed for season two. You know what I mean? It's like, no, this was, this was the show I always wanted to make. I think that... Uh, kind of like we talked about last week, you have to, you have to do the first five episodes first. You can't, this can't be the second episode of Box Peak. You know what I mean? You have to earn this episode. You have to work up to it. You got to get people guessing. You got to get people wondering and caring about what the deal with Kazomi is. Um, so yeah, you got to work up to this. And also you can't do only this. And so, you know what I mean? I can't, uh... You can't uh, uh, just do weird episodes where we sp spend the whole time away from Jordy for the rest of the series. You know what I mean? And so uh, episode six and seven is a good spot to put these in. You know what I mean? It's fun. It's fun to do something like this. Uh, is it fair to say the destiny of a dimension shouldn't rely on a 14 year old? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's it's already <laughs> that's every anime. <laughs> <laughs> every anime also asks this question uh so it's not like that was a unique thought about like we're a bunch of 14 year olds um i wanted kazomi to have enough reason to leave you know what i mean like she could have had a really really good cushy life and then she left that but no i wanted it to be a, a world where they depend on her that she leaves uh because i think that's a, maybe a more powerful decision in a way Are you thinking about doing more merch using the actual art for posters, mouse pads, mugs? Um, R. Haley, again, I can't talk about upcoming merch, uh, though there will be an announcement uh, sometime. <laughs> uh, that won't be for me. Uh, is Kazomi's phone mess obsession just messages from her team in the other dimension just screaming at her to come back? Um, sorry, that was not a tease. I should not say that there's any cool Box Peak merchandise planned at this moment. 
uh, do not take that as a tease and take that as a negative tease. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so Potato Viking. The phone worked two ways. I wanted people to think Kazomi is a boring teenage girl who's always on her phone. And then I wanted also people to think, oh, the phone is she's spying. Uh, so that's what the phone is. But yeah, the phone is her communicator. That's how she keeps in check with uh, the world that she used to be with. Um, and so, yeah, you don't. she does not have her phone when she appears at the end of the episode. That's uh, That phone's gone. What do you think about the nine-year-old watching this with their parent? Uh, such a funny question because so often I get tweets that are like, uh, hey, here's my kid who loves your show. And it's like, do I say? <laughs> and I don't, I don't say. Uh, I've known, obviously, episodes six and seven are coming this entire time, right? I know there is going to be a character who burns alive. And all I could do is when people ask you, like, to be fair, I remember a question, like, uh, season one, someone was like, hey, what's the target demo for this show? And I'm like, 31 and up. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I tried. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. Kids see creepy stuff. I never said this is a kid's show, but I don't think, I don't know that a nine year old. I've seen worse stuff when I was nine years old. Does she still have her powers in the box peak world? I mean, her only power is to travel to other dimensions. So, I mean, yes, she, yeah. Kids watch Goosebumps. Exactly. This is way less scary than any Goosebumps episode I've ever seen. Why did Kazomi use her powers initially to travel to the Box Peak Dimension only? Good question. So the way I saw it, or imagined it anyway, is she's just traveling around, and she stopped after she found the Box Peak Dimension. Because she's like, oh, I like Box Peak. Um, to me, it's clear she goes there for Box Peak. She loves Box Peak. And wants to see more of it. Um, and so while I imagine in the past she probably did a bunch of hopping around, the reason she's obsessed with Box Peak, the Box Peak realm, the Box Peak dimension. Thoughts of making a full size box prop as an office decoration? Turbo Chicken Man, I don't think you're thinking through how big that would have to be. To, hit, to fit a whole human body into a box, that thing's got to be big. We're talking maybe four or five feet by four and five feet. I don't know, man. <laughs> That's a big box. Was this inspired by a specific episode of Power Rangers? No, but I definitely looked at some stuff, uh, especially for the shots, because it's so hard to... In your imagination, you're like, okay, there's two... There's a robot fighting a giant monster in a city. And then when it's time to, like, create it, it's like, oh, what does that look like? And so there's a layer of tops of buildings that's, like, foreground, right? And then you have your two characters in the middle. And then background is another layer of buildings. Behind that, a layer of mountains. And then behind that, a layer of sky. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite tiny, tiny dumb jokes is that uh, when we cut to the scene with the giant rat monster, uh, Jiko changed the sky to green for no reason because that's his only power. <laughs> like, just as they're waiting for Kazomi, he's just like, green, 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 green. Um, and I thought that was like, green's like one of the only colors that the sky is never, you know? So I thought that was fun. Did you have any reactions from other allies regarding the dark turn of this episode? I remember, so the initial read through with Jones and Amanda, um, we did the first five episodes first. And then I had the second five, the back five, like kind of written. I had very, very rough drafts of the back five. And so we read through the first five and they were like, let's do the second five. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. They're not really ready. And they're like, let's do it. Uh, I remember Amanda really liking this episode. I don't know if that's a fake memory or not, but I think she was like into this. 
And she's like, oh, I get this now. I get Kazomi now. It's like, cool, 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 cool. That was fun. What about the other kid from Fairboat Islands? What about him? He's just some dumb guy that CD forgot about. Is the most fun portion the problem solving of the show or something else for you? I think it's the most fun. No, uh, most fun might be reading live reactions to the episodes. Honestly, it's what I think about when I'm writing and when I'm drawing is what is the reaction to this? Uh, and so seeing people laugh uh, about like, uh, give me some of Kazomi's fries. Okay. It's like, that's like, it fills my heart with joy. It fills it. Was Kazomi's first time in the Box Peak Dimension when she met Jordy? I don't think so, because uh, it's, uh, who is this? Oh, it's my new friend Kazomi. Um, why would a cool girl like her be hanging out with you? She said she loves Box Peak. I love Box Peak. Okay, so she already loves Box Peak when she meets Jordy. So no, I think she had been there at least a few times ahead of time. It's implied she already loves Box Peak when they met. <laughs> How satisfying is it to have an idea for a scene like the spinning background and finally figuring it out and nailing it versus other parts of the process like designing or editing? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of this stuff when I'm like looking at it in the camera and it's like, oh, that's exactly it. This shot, that shot's actually super hard. The shot of Kazomi, it's like two seconds of Kazomi in her cockpit because that's like five layers. So that's front cockpit layer another cockpit layer i think kazomi a, a layer behind her and then i cheated uh the clouds moving are actually two different takes um uh that i composited over it um uh, but all of those things existed in the same 3d space with each other uh that scene took forever and the, again that's just like you can't really trace over so it's like when everything cuts around and you cut it all out it's like oh this actually works with each other in a 3d space i'm so stoked i'm stoked when that happens um was peaker f12 being asked do you love box peak in the previous episode an intentional nod to jordy's first question to it uh not a nod i'm hey i'm cool with talking about past episodes too um not a nod but like the way i see it is jordy this kid from fairboat coming in and asking a peak ref if it likes box peak somebody that nobody would do who lives on let's go island obviously who grew up with this their entire lives i feel like that was the beginning of peak ref 12 getting its motors running um you know what i mean like do i like box peak it hadn't really it had not asked its, itself that question ever either and so yeah uh that was kicking off the whole peak ref 12 saga when jordy says do you like box peak do i struggle with coming up with new character names and designs to differentiate them yeah, for sure. I mean, like, Jiko, I think, had eight different names. Uh, Church was one shot. You're like, okay, that guy's Church. <laughs> I know what he sounds like. I know what he looks like. Church is Church. Uh, but yeah, sometimes when you're trying to come up with silly, like, sci-fi names, it's so hard. Loza, I think, had a couple of names. Uh, Kazomi's a nod. Kazomi's a nod. That was easy. What was the power of the Frozen Ranger? I imagine it's something amazing. You know what I mean? Like, I imagine he was, like, able to, like, turn an enemy inside out. <laughs> just, like, sk sk ah, I imagine he has, like, a power that's just incredible. But uh, there's nothing canonically established yet. What tier is Jordi in at this point? I mean, definitely implied he's played some matches in between, right? I love that. Uh, oh, this lady gave it to me. Uh, because she saw me beat a couple of guys in So Comfy City. So we skipped So Comfy City completely. We skipped those matches. Um, I don't know. You'll find out. You'll find out where he's at in future episodes. And don't ask about future episodes. Can we get a better look at the character that can be seen in the background before the intro song? Oh, um, that's funny. Uh, maybe. I do have my box... My box of uh, extra characters. I didn't think to pull that character. 
Just, she's just a woman eating food, right? I don't know. It's gonna be really hard to find that. This box is full. I can't show you, obviously, because there's future stuff in here. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Like, I found Thurvin, so we're close. Yeah, we got her. Heck yeah. <laughs> She's sad, Jet. Look at her. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Just eating alone. I've been there. <laughs> Another lunch at Shugi's. Love that. Uh, really dumb tip, and I don't know if you can tell. So there she is. The back of the head. Ooh, I don't know. That shot is over really quick. There's a, there's a familiar back of the head where Jordy sits down right there. But yeah, but then I guess it's not in this in that and again. Okay, cool. Just for the super fans to recognize that head. Did you use cardboard for that one brief shot? Yeah, I gotta show you that box too. I gotta show you that box. That box rules, it's my favorite box. So check this out. This was like super easy to make. It's super sturdy. It made me wish that I made all of the boxes out of cardboard. This thing rules. Just a little bloop. It was really fun getting that shot too. This thing is, this thing is, look at that thing. Love that box. Yeah. So yeah, I made a whole separate cardboard box and like I, it made me wish that I made for the entire series, all the boxes out of cardboard. But the BPO only approves double plastic boxes. Yeah, so nobody's getting any points. When you're playing street box peak, you're not getting points. Um, did I always intend for Kazomi's side story to be a parody of Power Rangers, or did that come later as you were fleshing out the world of the story? Uh, I think that when I'm planning out the series... I don't need the headphones on, by the way. When I'm planning out the series... Uh, I wanted each character to have a thing, you know what I mean? Um, and so, no, I would say that the Power Rangers thing was pretty much planned before I started scripting out anything, for sure. That came pretty early. That was a really exciting idea to me. Jordy is at least chocolate tier since CD told him to use box mods last episode. Yeah, I think, you know what? I think that's fair to assume, actually. Good, good, uh, good thinking. We got a, we have an, we have a super fan. We got somebody paying attention. Please tell me that's not too quiet behind Jordy. That's too quiet. That's that too quiet head. Who refs street box peak? Other oh, kids. Just other kids. Did Kazomi knowingly leave her friends for dead, or was it Vavava's fault for putting the team in danger without Kazomi? Here we go. Here come the Kazomi apologists. Kazomi knew what would happen if she left. I won't hear this chat. Kazomi knew what she did. Or is it Vavava's fault? Stop this. <laughs> <laughs> Kazomi stands. <laughs> oh. So to me, like Street Box Peak is like, it, it's street basketball, right? It's the episode or like the part of the movie where it's like, all right, you think you're pretty good in the NBA? We're going to show you some stuff playing street basketball. And the pro is like, okay. And then he gets the ball stolen from him and somebody dunks it. And it's like, okay. And then that's that whole episode. Uh, I had no interest in actually making a street box peak episode, just making fun of one. Did you name the monsters? No, I think in the script, this one's called Dolphin Monster and the other one's called Rat Monster. I think that's all we got. 
I think that's all they were giving, unfortunately. Man, the dolphin monster's cool. He's got, like, uh, seaweed legs. He looks really cool. I'm thinking, right, when I was... I was talking about this last week, about, like, giving away all the actual puppets. Um, I want to keep... This is, like, the coolest thing. I'm going to keep this, I think. This one, like, this is for me. <laughs> I think I'm keeping that. What is a box? It's double plastic. Do you have to be native to this universe to become a box peeker? What's the process of getting a box porter? You got to pay for it. You got to pay for a box porter. <laughs> what is it? I forget. I forget the opening line, actually. Despite how many hundreds of times I've heard everything. This has to be worth 30,000 marbles? I forget how much a box porter is. But yeah, it's a process for sure. Is it tinfoil inside the orb? No, it's like, um, it, I had the hardest time asking for it when I went 60K. Got it. Okay. Um, uh, I, cause I didn't know like what the thing is called. You know what I mean? The, the, the weird paper you wrap around a basket that's see-through. I'm like, do you have like see-through wrapping basket? And they're like, yeah, it's in section 12. It's like, okay. But that's what it is. And then I just cut it up into tiny strands. Did I ever consider having an Alpha 5 character in the Power Ranger dimension? No. So I tried to... It's weird. Like, when you're writing a sketch, when you're writing parody, you want to have as few characters as possible, right? I think that it would have been extra. You know, I take that back. If an Alpha 5 character popped in at the end of that scene, it would have been very funny. I, he gets, uh, shut up, church. And then it's like, wazoo! Yeah, I'd actually, I changed my mind. I think that would have been very funny. I wish you gave me that note last week. Um, but no, I, I'll tell you before that point, I didn't consider having an Alpha 5. Just because you don't want to... There's a lot of piling on in that whole scene, in this whole thing. You, you want to pile on as little as possible, but still kind of add stuff. Oh, I can show you Kazomi's room. Give me one second to find it. There's some cool stuff in Kazomi's room that's not in any of the shots. Cool. So it's really, I mean, it's really, really hard to do this stuff. Um, to decorate someone else's room, you know? Um, and so I asked my friends, what does a 14 year old girl have in her room? And she gave me a list. And so she was like, uh, <laughs> she has a retainer case. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, a succulent, you know, like a little potted plant. All right, we got that, there's her bed. Um, a keyboard, 14 year old girls have keyboards because uh, they're learning to play keyboard um a uh a stuffed penguin uh that's a hoverboard i think that was just a request after i said oh by the way she's a sci-fi teen um and then like a sort of makeup case and so that's yeah that's what you know i, I got everything on the list that's a 14 year old girl's room because i didn't want to know no post like i think it's super easy to be like um you do a 14 year old girl's room and it's like, okay, here's like a little teen star pop star. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't... <laughs> by the way, I reused these posters. Um, just rearranged them from the other, the previous Shugi scene and uh, Yum times three was coming soon. And so I had to do that shot twice. I'm like, oh, time has progressed. I have to make it, I have to communicate that Yum times three isn't coming soon anymore. It's here. Uh, so I had to do that shot again, putting a little piece of, I had to cut out is here and then put it over the poster. Um, stupid detail. Worth it, I think. Show the progression of time. Are you going to scan in the puppets just to have the, all these drawings in high quality for the future? Uh-uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, Yum times three is canceled. Yeah, in a future episode. That's a really funny idea. <laughs> you undervalue your work. Uh, I mean, I'm, yeah. Somebody else do it then. <laughs> I don't want to scan everything. <laughs> Somebody else do it. Do you have a canonical voice in your mind for Ronar? 
Yeah, he's a hunk. Ronar sounds like a hunk. He sounds cool and confident. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we all know what Ronar sounds like. Have you got the full story finished? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, unless you mean, like, is every episode ready to be seen? Which, in case, no. Episode 10 still needs a lot of work, to be honest with you. But, you know, I got a few weeks to get that done. Um, episodes 8 and 9, we could almost watch right now. Uh, both of them need, they need, they need, like, a little tinkering, for sure. Um, and by the way, I said that about this episode last week. And I put, like, maybe three or four more hours in the episode. Which is bad. The reason I, we, I almost borked it. I almost had this whole episode sound like it's in a Tupperware container because I added reverb last second. Like, man, it's just, I, I got a bad process. I got to be honest with you. I mean, in your head, do you have Box Speak all planned story-wise? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've had it all planned story-wise two and a half years ago. I mean, things definitely change for sure. Um, but yeah, for sure. For, for sure. That was important to me to have an ending in mind when you start. You know what I mean? Ronar is Chris Hemsworth. That's good casting. That's really good casting. I think you're right. I think you're right. It's good. What's the biggest change from the initial script so far? Um, some, I, I've added scenes. I've changed things. In this episode in particular, there's a big change. There is a big pickup for Kazomi um, in the scene where she is having her argument with Jiko. Um... Yeah, here we go. So, Kazomi, your actions were selfish. And she goes, Some alien drops into our lives, gives us stupid powers, and forces us to battle freaky monsters all the time, and I'm selfish. And so, I wanted to add two extra things to that. Um, I realized that in the text of Box Peak, it's never clear how old Kazomi is. And so that's why she says a bunch of 14-year-olds. Um, there was some other thing I added to that line, too, that was like important to me. I guess for her to like bounce back, I don't know. It felt weird, and so I like I wanted to add that into it, to her have attack at Jiko back, have it a real true back to back. Like when she interrupts him, I'm like, yeah, this is an argument. Let's go, Kazomi. Um, <laughs> but I do miss I miss the fact that like these kids have to live with Vavava. <laughs> I love this idea of, like, Vavava coming to Earth and, like, okay, you are my Magna soldiers now. It's like, ah, okay. And, I love, like, you know, he, Jiko is clearly mad, and Vavava's like, I sense that you're upset. It's, oh, Vavava, buddy. You know, I just, I love how annoying Vavava is in, like, a, such a, like, a subtle way. Um, Yeah, that was a good pickup from Amanda. That's some good stuff. Oh, right. This was so good. This is what I wanted is I wanted to make it clear at the beginning of the argument that Kazomi would not abandon her team. And so I said that to Amanda. This was interesting. This is this is Amanda's line uh, when she goes, but Chico, I would never leave the team. Um, that's her imp improving. And it's so good. It's so direct and clear. And so I wanted to make it clear that this argument, this discussion, Ronar's advice is why Kazomi abandoned the team. That she wouldn't have ahead of time. If Jiko never walked into this room, she would have showed up the next day and kept fighting with the team, right? But because of this discussion, that's what caused that. And it wasn't clear in the first draft of this scene. And so, yeah, that was that was a super clutch move by Amanda. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Best in the biz. She made it really, really clear. Uh, back in the day, did you look at Zordon and think, man, this guy's so annoying? I thought, like, you look at Zordon and you're like, this, these kids have to hang out with this guy. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird they have to hang out with this guy. It's weird this thing is, like, bossing them around, for sure. For sure, for sure. All right, chat. Let's do let's do our three more questions. Let's get three more in, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up the stream and look forward to episode eight next week.
is Don't Call Me Mama, but yes, I am your mama, part of the Box Peak multiverse. Uh, this won't be one of the three because we covered it last week. It is not. Not part of the multiverse. Uh, favorite moments you've done in the series so far? This is my favorite episode. We'll see. We'll see if the others after this uh, take its spot. But I think writing this one, drawing this one, editing this one, I like knew this was going to be my favorite app. <laughs> I'm almost like, when I was doing this, I'm like, why didn't I just make a cool Power Rangers show? <laughs> but it defeats the purpose, right? They're 2D paper things, so it had to be Box Peak. If it was 10 episodes of this, it wouldn't work. It actually would not work if it's 10 episodes of this. You only get one, basically. The next time you show a scene like this, it's like not working. Um, uh, so yeah, this was it had to be a special episode, basically. Um, do you pick colors for any reason, like complementary, etc.? Uh, really good question. I think a lot of that for most, excuse me for calling myself an artist. I, I, I'm like, don't call yourself an artist. I'm doing it. Most artists, I think most artists untrained like myself didn't go to art school, actually, believe it or not. Um, it's subconscious. You know what I mean? Like you're just you're doing colors to bounce off of colors. And I would say I do a bad job most of the time. Um, I love Jiko being purple though. I love Jiko being purple with red hair. I, I like, I like how he looks. Um, and so, yeah, mostly like, I mean, I guess if they were asking about that, like the hair color matching their uniform color, for sure. I try to get stuff that would like bounce off of it well and also not be repeated with the other characters. Don't call me an artist, but yes, I am your artist. Yeah. Um, mm. Uh, did the monster they lost to proceed to destroy the rest of the city? That's up to you. I'm not gonna, like, I'm not, obviously, there's no canon for that. There's no text for that. But, like, obviously, right? <laughs> you can you can believe whatever you want to believe. I'm not gonna tell you what to believe. But to me, yeah, that thing just destroyed the city. <laughs> <laughs> Can Kazomi travel to the Mama universe? That is the thing, is Kazomi can theoretically travel to any universe, yes. Any dimension. How does it feel to get all the credits in? Feels pretty good. Obviously, it's embarrassing to have an episode 6 credit in episode 7, but yeah. Where'd all the monsters come from? I didn't want to show their villain. I presume there's a villain uh, behind the monsters coming in, and like there's an idea. It's very clear that they pop up a lot, um, right? Like we just, as it's like every day we have to fight another giant monster. Like how crazy is this? Um, so yeah, I mean, there's something, there's something going on in that universe where it's like, this is unending. This is never going to end. <laughs> All right, Chad, I think we did, I think we did our last three questions. Making art means you're an artist. Doesn't mean you think you're good. Okay. All right. Well, then I'm an artist, chat. Thank you. <laughs> Probably DMAR. Stop this. Um, okay, chat. So uh, that was the entire episode. That was episode seven. A wild episode. Uh, again, that was my favorite. So all the episodes just get worse from here. Um, but look forward to them anyway. Um uh <laughs> that's what i feel weird about is like episode seven's always been my favorite and then i wonder like how is um how is like what are they are they gonna are they gonna get worse <laughs> uh no we get to continue the story which is really exciting um yeah we got to we got to see what kazomi's all about and yeah now we know right like you, you got to do one episode for that um, so yeah, uh, later tonight I'll be streaming, uh, Ice Age, Scrat's Nutty Adventure, and, <laughs> uh, it just sounds funny to say out loud, and Jumanji, I'll be streaming those tonight, uh, and then yeah, next week at 11am, we'll be back here for episode 8, and a Q&A to follow. Um, here's the crazy thing, is... I wanted to go live and say, hey, everybody, I'm having te technical difficulties, but I couldn't because I always have to restart the computer before it premiere. And so I do feel bad about communicate not communicating, but I think we were within five minutes late. And so I think you get five minutes of wiggle time. Wiggle room. I think you get five minutes of wiggle room. 
Um, and then you can uh, uh, be late. And so I think we got in with the five minutes. Super fun. Thanks for hanging out, chat. Thanks for asking questions. Appreciate it. Thanks for being um, attentive. The Magna soldiers didn't get five minutes. They did not. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is fun chat. Really fun episode. Fun to have you around. Um, let's guess about next week, please. Guess away. Not while I'm watching, but yeah. When Once I leave, start making guesses. And I am streaming tonight. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Chat, I'm going to wave goodbye. I'm going to mute myself. Uh, we can have a robot party. And we'll see you all around.